wish this was about about, about pleasant things tonight. Um, the information I'm going to present here can be found at this website or these websites. I'd like to read you guys a short story this evening. It's going to be short and brief. I need uh, help if um, help is out there. I'm fighting a human rights case dealing with uh, disability discrimination, um, Department of Justice corruption, uh, parental rights, civil rights, human rights. It Where it's going to go, I don't even know yet. Um, all the information is on um, these websites. Feel free to come join us on Facebook, join the group, send me a friend request, tell me uh, that you've seen me on eBay, or eBay, uh, YouTube, so I know you're not just somebody trying to give me a sign up for free money. Um, so I'm going to read you this short story, and if this doesn't move you, this is, okay, so this is a petitioner's challenge is what I'm calling this, or a community challenge. And if I can read this without you being moved, then don't come sign my petition. I mean, that's where I'm at right now. Um, so I was in the uh, Montana as a boot camp program. It deals with uh, rehabilitation of um, troubled young men trying to find their way in life. Um, and here's the story. I'm just going to, hopefully I can read this without getting emotional. Um, I'm not. I'm the author of it, but I'm not the proud author of this. I do not take any pride in having to write stories like this. Um, so I'm going to do my best to read straight through it and uh, make it understandable for you guys. All right, so here we go. There was a young kid in this program with me. I am sorry his name escapes my thoughts at the moment. I am going to call him Brighton. This kid was... 19, a first-time offender in the program for something stupid like joyriding in a car. His crimes are a little are fuzzy details in my mind. I do not know Bright I do know Brighton's parents died when he was young and he was raised by his grandmother. Several times a week in the evening, after having our asses physically busted by the program for 16 hours straight, we would line up in front of our bunks for mail call. Oh, what a glorious time. Letters from loved ones. The drill sergeant would start... Forgive me, i got to readjust the page. The drill sergeant would start on one side, working his way down that side and back the other, handing out letters to the lucky few. Brighton was last in line. The drill sergeant stopped at Brighton and informed him that they had to read his letter for security purposes. They informed him of bad news. They then informed him of the bad news. His grandmother is on her deathbed. This will be her last letter. Brighton's natural reaction to this was uncontrollable sobbing and feeble attempts to hold his posture and, correct, and collect the letter. Every individual in the room was deeply affected by witnessing this young man's world crash around him. His only remaining guardian gone forever. Before Brighton could summon the strength to lay his hands on the dreadful notice, the drill sergeant tore the envelope into pieces and threw it into a nearby trash can. He then started belittling Brighton, telling him how he doesn't deserve to read his grandma's last words because he was a POS, G-rated version, that never did anything good for his grandmother. The drill sergeant's verbal abuse went on for what seemed like eternity. At some point, the drill sergeant kicked Brighton's footlocker across the floor, spilling its contents, and demanded that Brighton clean them up. We were only allowed to watch as Brighton crawled around sobbing and attempting to comprehend and put his life back together. Quite some time later, Brighton was finished with his unexpected chore in getting better emotional control. 
So the drill sergeant attempted to make Brighton feel better by informing him that the letter was never in the envelope and presented it to him. As a bonus, his grandma isn't really dying. That day, the pain and loss Brighton felt so intensely, even if it was false, was shared by every human in that room. And it transformed something in me. It forced me to acknowledge how ugly my world is and created a hatred that I can never walk away from. If that story moved you, please share this, share my petition, have people sign. Um, ultimately, my goal is judicial reform. I have been through their system. They have said it has failed to work for me every step of the way. So, you know, I have nothing but failure stories to present to the, uh, to the world. And so this position, petition I talked about, what it is, is it is, I am auditing these sons of bitches. Yes, the Department of Justice. I am presenting my case against the state of Montana, which has lost its sovereign immunity and all officers they're under not immune to suit against me in the federal courts um, I have filed this in the federal courts they have dismissed uh, with prejudice um, denying me the right for a public jury um, all this information I filed in the federal courts including evidence of corruption by cops in your valley county on paper their own internal documents um, judges undisqualifying themselves to hear against people, judges attempting to manipulate people out of money. Um, it's all right there in paper. Unfortunately, I can't do it all in a, in a um, verbal um, format right now. Um, but it's all right there on Can of Worms. Come join us. Um, check out my petition on change.org, Sean Cowan. Uh, human rights petition. Please sign my petition. Share this uh, with everybody that you think might be touched by it. And you know, let's let's kick some asshole fucking government in the chest, man. I mean, <laughs> metaphorically. Um, thanks, guys. I wish you the best.